Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Worship Splits with Terry. The Gauden Liu, the Tier 10 Dutch battle cruiser, <laughs> heavy super cruiser, whatever we want to call it. Uh, whenever I did the review, there, I mentioned that there are quite a few possible builds that I could imagine for this ship. So this is sort of the second build that I've tried. The first one in the original video, you can always look it up. Uh, I, I did have the Elite Gun Operator here. This is the stealth build, the stealth and speed build on this ship. I've switched the uh, I've switched the elite bonus over to the advanced engine, which gives us more speed and better acceleration. And I have switched the modules out. So I'm still using the airstrike modification because this is geared towards maximizing uh, what you can do with your what you can do with your uh, with your airstrike. Now, this doesn't actually get you an additional airstrike but it does get them out earlier, which means you can take advantage of, of things that you may otherwise not be able to take advantage of. So that's a good thing. Uh, we're still having propulsion in second and we're actually having concealment in third. Now, the reason I'm using concealment here is because a lot of people have mentioned that and because I was curious to, to try it. Although the Gauden Leo does not have the greatest concealment to begin with. So what does that get us to? Uh, this gets us to a 16, a very respectable 16 second time to full speed and um, a top speed, a base top speed of 34.7 knots, which is quite quick. Uh, and it gets uh, it gets the airstrike down as we had before to 58 seconds. But the surface detection is now at 8.5 kilometers, which is okay. It's not great, but for a ship that size, it's actually pretty good. So that's what I've tried. And... Uh, to see if it would make a difference, especially in terms of positioning, and if, you, it, if it allowed you to get into positions that you otherwise wouldn't be getting into because you would be just uh, massacred by the enemy battleship line or route while you're trying to get into positions. So let's uh, have a couple of games and see how this plays out. The first battle is played on fault line in base capture mode, and you can kind of already see how that's going to go, how that's going to end, just from what the matchmaker has done, because the matchmaker decided to put all the legendary league players into one team. I mean, fair enough, one of them is a triple division of the Colombo, Monty, and Shima, and throw another Co Colombo and a Smolensk in there on top of that. Oh well, uh, do note that these are bot CVs, so they're not going to scout. So let's go and see what we're going to up, go, get up to. At least we have two destroyers as well. So um, uh, Harugumo should technically be capable of maybe of taking on a Shima, I guess, if they if they can spot him. Uh, at least they can get some spotting done. So we are spawning on our left flank, which means I'm going to sneak ahead. And hopefully the Harugumo is going to do some spotting and find me some targets. At least there are plenty of islands that I can hide behind and uh, do some airstrikes across into the center area. So the idea here with this setup is, um, is it, and it looks like we have an AFK Harugumo, so that's a good start. Uh, the idea with this setup is to, uh, to, to sneak into a position and um, yeah, nope, <laughs> no Harugumo for me, to sneak into position and uh, you know, surprise enemy ships, uh, be able to strike from positions and disengage if necessary without, um, without you know, being obliterated by the enemy battleship line. So given that I have no scout, oh no, the Harugum will actually walk up. Okay, uh, welcome to the battle. So uh, it would be great if you could scout ahead, like where I'm going. That would be really nice because there is going to be a Shimakaze going, probably going to be a Shimakaze coming down this route. Nope, Harugumo wants to play in the center. Okay, that means I can't really push forward too much because while this is a stealth build, um, I'm not going to outspot a Shimakaze in that thing. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hang just inch forward carefully, to see if 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 I get spotted, and uh, that way I would know that there's a Shima there. Okay, there's a Colombo uh, sitting playing around the center, and there's the Smolensk. Okay, first target Smolensk. Obviously, Smolensk is reversing, so I'm gonna drop slightly behind him. And uh, unfortunately, I can't, I don't have line of sight, but I can try to. Yeah, please stay stay exactly there. <laughs> That's where I want you to be. Uh, that was that was disappointing. That could have gone better. Uh, Smolensk controls a single fire, and it would be really great if I could push here because if I knew that there was no Shima, 
uh, then I, then I can put I can push along here. But we've we haven't spotted any Odashimas yet, so uh, I I can't use my guns. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting some backup, but um, now the Smolensk is retreating, obviously. So if I had been able to push a bit more forward with the Haragumu scouting, that would have been a different story. Okay, Christopher Colombo is now sitting in a crossfire. And I don't think he's looking... No, he's not looking my way. So he's sitting still and he's getting uh, he's getting an airstrike. So I am targeting his bow section. Uh, triple fire, damage control start, obviously. Uh, bow section penetrated. <laughs> and uh, that should be a pretty dead Christopher Colombo. So we don't really need to follow up with, um, with another shot. But uh, that's a dead CC. Okay. Now the Yamato is coming with me. And, and I am spotted. I'm, I'm putting up the sonar. But now I'm unspotted again, so I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure there is a Shima here. I just don't know where exactly. Okay, uh, never mind that. There is a Smolensk. Yeah, there he is. Okay, I knew he was there. I knew the little bastard was there. Okay, uh, a couple of shots at, hit at the Smolensk. No luck. Uh, dive bomber, um, level bomber's out. And I'm just warning the Yama that there's a Shimakaze coming, about to come around the corner. And against destroyers, I am not particularly effective. But uh, okay, Shima, Shima does not want to come around. So I'm just getting in range here, and Yamato has noticed it. Thank you, good player. Uh, Shima is sitting there. I'm not spotted, so he is still behind that island. Is he lurking? Is he just waiting to come out? Uh, Yamato is firing some blind shots. I'm just going to drop that, drop there, and see if my planes can spot him, and flush him out from there. Colombo coming in, uh, shots coming in from the left, uh, from behind, and there's the Shima. Yeah, run right into that, please. Yes, nice. Couple of bomb hits and um, everything out. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't know if the Shima is dropping me or if it's dropping the Yamato, but um, I need to slow down anyway and bow in towards the Colombo because that thing hurts. Uh, I think this was a pre this was a pre nerf recording, so uh, this is still the old Colombo. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, that goes out. And I am just out of out of airstrike range now. Ideally, I'd be behind the island. The problem is I had to cover the Yamato when it came to that Shimakaze. And uh, I think the Harugumo is firing at the Shima and I am in range of the Colombo. So let's get an airstrike off on that thing. That might have the nice side effect that I can actually respot the Shima. Yep, there he is. Okay, Shima air spotted. Ow, yes, that's the, that is the semi armor piercing by the way of the Colombo, right? <laughs> it's not even the armor piercing. And Iron Jesus says, nope. <laughs> And the Colombo smoked up, the Shima has gone undetected. I mean, I know where this Colombo is, he's right in his smoke. That's a fuel smoke, you can move in that thing. Uh, and he is moving, actually. He's moving slightly forward, but yeah, that's the same armor piercing. And no Citadel, Whoa, We're getting capped, by the way. This game's already lost, like I told you. But now we know where the Colombo is, because the fire is visible. And he's sitting there and giving me a nice flat broadside, not Damaconing a single fire. So, uh, let's see if we can do something about that. Make that two fires. Oh, Shima is back. Okay, Shima has been spotted. Uh, not sure how. It might have been the carrier. Ow, oh, that was once again semi armor piercing Citadel from the Colombo. Uh, Harugumo is joining the fight now. I'm just gonna murder that Shima casually over there. Yep, Shima dead. Finally, that thing's dead. And drop another airdrop onto the Colombo, although he is on triple fire, perma fire by the looks of it. And yeah, Harugumo, you do realize that that's the Christopher Colombo. Why the hell are you rushing that thing? Um, when, we're burn when we're busy burning him down, and that is going to be a dead Harugumu in one second, once his SAP has reloaded, because... Uh, there he goes. Okay. So now I'm the last ship alive against five enemy ships. Uh, so let's see if I can take the Colombo down with me. <laughs> Just, you know, for shits and giggles. Uh, so we switched back to the armor piercing. We're going for the full pens in, the, in this turn section. Uh, at this range, I might be able to do something, but... Um, uh, I've, I've got more reliable full AP pens in the um, in the bar and stern. Semi armor piercing citadels left, right, and center, obviously. And can I still get him? Yes, I got him. <laughs> Citadel, you right back. <laughs> Just the second that he take, takes me out, and then that's a defeat, obviously. To nobody's great surprise, the Smolensk has survived. What's really fascinating is that if the Haragumu had spotted early, if the Haragumu had gone with me on the left flank and had scouted that there's no Shima. I could have pushed into the Smolensk and, and, and obliterated that thing. And that would have meant, I mean, we still probably wouldn't have won, but that would have meant, let's see how much he did, 87,000 points of damage. That's actually a relatively low damage roll for a Smolensk. But um, 
I could have I could have obliterated that thing just with uh, with guns and and from the air relatively easily if uh, our destroyer had managed to spot. Unfortunately, he didn't. So um, yeah, that ended as it was expected. So let's go for a second one. The second round, we're playing Epicenter in Chain. Uh, once again, up against the division uh, of Taiho, Alaska and Jutland. But that means there is a fair amount of tier 9s in the game. Uh, other than that, Monty, Izumo, Wooster uh, and a Shima. Uh, we do have a division on our own side, with a fail division though, with uh, the Missouri and the Mogami, which means the Mogami has now gotten himself into a tier 10 game. And uh, yeah... Anyway, let's go. <laughs> so in Epicenter, this is kind of the interesting litmus test. Uh, obviously, there's a carrier in play, so that will to, to a degree negate my stealth. But can I manage to get into position where I want to be without being spotted and obliterated by the battleship line with a more stealthy setup? Because I will have a, I'll have a noticeably better surface detection. So I want to be... Where's my island waifu? Mm, that, one, that one will do. The one right in front of me there. So we're going to go that there and we're going to be using that island as a torpedo and gun shield and hopefully that brings us close enough in range of things that I can um, I can use it to drop stuff onto the enemy line. We'll see. Enemy. Anyway, the carrier is coming here. Uh, our, both our Shimas are actually getting into the capture circle, which is unusual these days. So I am, look, if you're in a Shimakaze and you know that there's a carrier, right? Don't do this. Don't don't just rush forward. You you see a, you see a Hoden Leo or, or a Wooster or something pushing next to you, right? Stay with that thing until the first airdrop's out. So uh, I am trying to see what I can do, but obviously the Shimas are too far ahead that um, my short range AA is not going to make it into, uh, on point, and now they're moving. Now, now, now he's plastered against an island, but uh, I do have a Jutland to shoot at. So let's see what we can do. I, I shoot down a couple of planes, but it would have been a hell of a lot better if these guys have just had just stuck with me instead of rushing the center cup early. And um, and because they will be air spotted, uh, there's a, there's an enemy Worcester. There are some dangerous destroyers on the enemy team. So you know, don't do that. Just stick with the AA cruiser, who has gotten himself into a position here, and then go out afterwards. Unfortunately, the Alaska is is out of um, the Alaska is is out of my airstrike range. But I don't want to poke out any further. Now, uh, the Howden Leo is not particularly great against destroyers. Um, there, there is a Shimakaze doing a flanking run, so I am, I am trying to do an airdrop there in his wake, just to, to see if that's any good. Uh, but yeah, the, friend, the friendly double Shimas have realized that this isn't working and are backing out again. So the Jutland is never going to run into those torpedoes, so uh, over to the high explosive at this range I think might be the better choice. Nah, one hit. See, that's the other problem. The guns are not particularly precise, especially without the precise aim up. And um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm abusing the island uh, to the best of my abilities to block the incoming battleship fire and to go undetected. Now I'm not undetected because of my stealth, I'm undetected because of positioning right now. So this is something I could do in the other build as well. But what I kind of would have liked to see here is, um, is yeah, the, des the destroyers using me as, as AA support. Okay, we've got Monty over there, we can't hit him. Uh, a couple more blind shots out at the, at the Jutland. But I um, can't see him, so I can't also airdrop him. Uh, the, once again, there's a Shima on our left who is completely undeterred. And there's a Missouri who's going to be blubbed, um, who's going to be blubbed in the side by that Shima. Uh, I think the carrier is trying to drop the Shima. And I, I can't lob over these islands. What I can do is drop an airstrike in his way and hope that it does something. But um, yeah, these battleships don't look too great. The carrier really needs to... Uh, to do some, I know how hard it is, so uh, don't. Yay! <laughs> that worked. Okay, a couple of shots out at the Jutland, but uh, the Montana has noticed me and is now starting to Citadel me happy to, to go f go down to town and Citadel City. All right, I, I can't really help out with that with that Shima on the carrier anymore. He's gonna have to do something about it with these two Montes, and um, uh, I am doing what I can here uh, with with the planes that I have available. Alaska might die to Shima Torps? No, he's dodged them all. So uh, I'm back to armor piercing while getting happily citadeled in the front by, <laughs> by the Montana. I can drop an airdrop onto that reversing Alaska there. 
And uh, yeah, the, the carrier is dealing with the Shima. Hopefully we'll be able to, to sort him out. And now I can start working on the Montana. Yep, that's a dead Alaska. Uh, there comes some more battleship firing from the left, but that's blocked by the island. And there comes the Montana reverse fire. Fortunately, I was able to back up behind the island just in time. And now um, we are ahead on points. We're one kill ahead. The carrier is still being chased. The Essex is being chased around by a Shimakaze. The, I would love to help him. And there's absolutely nothing I can do. Not even my guns have range on that thing. Um, so let's give that poor Mogami some air cover and uh, between Mogami and me, Mo uh, uh, of course the Montana is shooting at me, uh, but the island once again blocks some things. Okay, double fire, he damacons, so airstrike ready. Now, so this, sh this should mean we, could, we should be able to burn down the Monty uh, from here Moga between Mogami and myself, because Mogami is a veritable fire starter. So I'm just going to back myself up here and that's a triple karma fire on the Monty. Sorry Monty. <laughs> And yeah, once again, the island is saving me here. Just have to keep an eye on the other side. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, the Monty is burnt, gonna burn down. Mogami, what are you doing? Why, why are you rushing the Monty? He's burning to death anyway. Okay, I'm gonna try and get back in there and see if I can do some, yeah, Monty is dead. Do some air cover against the uh, for the Shima, but um, I'm a little late here. Uh, so, Shima, why are you hanging around there? Come back here get between the battleship and the AA cruiser when your carrier drop. Seriously, so there's nobody threatening the center cup. <laughs> there's no reason for you to to, to be in it. Right? Um, okay, so Izumo next. Uh, well, let's see what we can do about the Izumo. High explosive again to try and bait the... Okay, the carrier has, has missed. Uh, double fire and a flood, so that Izumo is going to Damacon. Yep, and he is moving forward So and turning... Oh, is he turning around slightly? I'm not 100% certain, but let's burn him down and uh, get behind the island. Ow. Got lucky here. Couple shots out at the Izumo and airstrike, double perma fire, and second airstrike is ready. So now I can just, uh, because I'm done, I'm relatively low on hit points, I can just get behind the island. Do I have clearance? No, I don't have clearance. And I think the Izumo is actually backing off more than I thought he was going to be. But there's another perma fire, so um, uh, the carrier is doing the kill steal on the Izumo. That is fine, I don't mind. I'd rather have a dead Izumo. And that just leaves the enemy carrier. So, uh, Gauden Leo in a stealth build, it's not bad. I'm actually quite enjoying that, and I have to say I would probably go with it as well. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced with the elite bonus. I think I would switch that back to um, Terra Traverse and Gun Reload. And um, uh, yeah, but yeah, I think the stealth build is actually pretty fun. And it allows you sometimes to get into positions that you would otherwise not be able to get into. So uh, there is the Taiho. So let's get a couple more armor piercing shots out at that thing. That's going to be our last salvo because the battle is about to end. I don't think the Taiho is going to it's going to die still, but uh, still managed to get a little bit more damage in. So yeah, um, it's it's a fun way to play this ship, honestly. And uh, I think that's a that's a that, that is a veritable way also of doing it. It doesn't really change the basic meta of it, so you do have to play behind islands. You do have to use islands to shield yourself from torpedoes and battleship fire. She struggles very hard against destroyers due to the uh, poor dispersion and slow reload on the main guns and relatively low uh, HE damage. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's still a fun ship, I believe. It's not easy to play. You need to know your positioning and what you can and can't do. But uh, the airstrike mechanic is, is great fun. And uh, can, <laughs> if you're in a battleship and uh, you're facing one of these things and you're playing Ring Around the Rosies, just get out of range. Just get out of range of it and don't try to, don't be tempted. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.